So the move to, ho to host DPE here at Odor School, and what we're trying to really achieve overall, is that we're, we're trying to provide children opportunity to actually go through the technology curriculum and be a part of it. The misconception that we've had about tech is that they've shortened it from technology, is that when we used to think about tech, it was about mass producing the same item because that used to be the best fit for how society used to work. As society changes, the creative class is now becoming um, a part of our workforce that are quite important. And so they've got to have opportunities in that work, in that environment to be able to be creative, which means that, sure, they might build a pencil case, but does everyone have the same requirements and the same size and the same dimensions and put the same things in that pencil case? And where's their opportunity then to actually create something that's unique to themselves? So a lot of thought has to go into what you create and whether it can work or not. So what we're trying to do is provide opportunities for children to work um, in a modern learning environment. We're looking for providing opportunities with a, with a with students with the problem, some skeleton materials, but then giving them a chance to plan, explore, and provide different ways to solve the problem. And coding is almost like the next language. You know, we, we learn English in today, and there's almost now a place to learn coding. And so we're trying to provide our kids an opportunity to learn in that code, um, to, to draw in three dimension, to use, um, Productive threads, lights, wiring, electronics, which is really what the modern day requires, and saying to them, this is the problem, find a way to solve it. And if your way is different than another person's way, then that's great. I'm um, Colin Thoits, and um, my, my role is a um, robotics teacher. So we've been doing a couple of projects. Um, first one to start them off, we always do the um, uh, making it through a track, trying to trying to navigate their way through a track. So they're, they're having to program their robot to go through a track. Um, and so w when they trial it, it's all about trial and error. So they trial and then they re-go, re redo and change, modify the, the program. And then the next one I'm doing is a um, is an estimation activity where I, I put a um, a piece of tape on the ground and they, they line their robot up and then there's sort of a, like a target area so they don't obviously they are only able to step it out so they're using the estimation skill so once they step it out then they go back and they've got two minutes to program how far they think their distance is. We've been doing a sumo bot and a basic bot, and we've been like, like programming it to go backwards, forward, round corners, and stuff. So they're, so they're using the the math skills, the estimation skills. Um, you, you can sort of see the kids that are that are actually using these skills by how many times they go back and redo their robot. A lot of problem solving as well. So they're having to problem solve. Um, how, how to uh, move their bot, whether it's is it, is it, is it a left turn, is it a right turn, and when they go back and program their robot, it doesn't say whether it's a left or right turn, they've got to you know, figure it out for themselves. My name is Heath Chittenden, I'm the principal at Odor Primary School. Uh, my job is that I'm a, a DPE teacher and I teach 3D design and 3D printing. Our students first made bread clips, which was the introduction to the software that they used to develop all the skills for what they're going to create later. The second project they created was a, a stylus holder, because all the children at school have styluses, and they created a holder that would work. And then the third project that they did um, was they had to think of an issue or a problem with their home, at school, uh, or an agricultural issue, and they had to design project that would accommodate or solve the issue or enhance an existing product. Well you have to make it on a um, website called Tinkercad which is a 3D printing system and you make like you do shapes, measurements and all that and 
when you've done like what you want to make you have to make it into an STL and put it onto another computer app which is Cura and then use an um, SD card and transport what's on Cura to the 3D printer and select that and we'll start printing. So while they've learned skills around um, how to draw in three dimensions using Tinkercad, they've also learned about thinking about design, thinking about an issue, measuring, calculating, having to come up with different options, trialing and erring with error with some parts of their projects, and then coming down to a viable final solution, rather than thinking straight away, this one is the first idea I have, so this must be it. Um, my name's Mr Spice and I teach um, hard materials for technology, I guess that's woodwork. So they've, they've created a kind of uh, inbuilt speaker box, I guess. So if you have like an iPod or something like that, you can plug it into your iPod and it um, plays whatever you've got on that iPod. Um, well they've actually had to use a lot of um, mathematics with geometry and circles and um, things like that. They've also had to um, learn how to use a lot of tools. They've had to um, think about things like angles and um, accuracy and they've used millimetres and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. They've learned how to use a drop saw which again come, comes in handy with their angles. They've had to like set their angles and stuff like that. Um, one of the most important tools I've used is a square and it gives them their, um, their straight lines and every, they now know that whenever they work off something that everything needs to be square otherwise their um, panels don't match up. Uh, they've used saws and chisels and um, jigsaws as well. I had to cut all the sides with this grill saw and had to cut the circles in that machine and I had to use this to make it in shape and I had to glue it together. So um, they've really actually designed and made their own one and um, it's pretty much, the, when it's finished it'll be pretty much ready to plug in and play. Uh, yeah, we tested it out today and it goes really loud. Okay, well I'm Olivia Erickson and I teach e-textiles for DPE, uh, Design Production Education, and I um, am a part of the organising team with her. Okay, when they first come to DPE we make a bookmark um, with LED lights. Uh, for the first day, so they take that home on the first day and then they work on their project, which is a gadget bag. There's a bag that will carry their technological gadgets, such as iPad, and um, it has LED lights as well. Uh, quite a few skills, lots of skills actually. Um, for starters, knowing how to use a sewing machine and hand sewing, how to cut straight, how to measure, so lots of other skills incorporated into DPE technology. Because we use keywords the, the whole session to reinforce it, so every DPE session they go to, they're building on their technology. So in my LED, I like sew into my bag. Okay, how do they work? Um, so I sew um, some stuff called connective thread onto it, and there's like um, electricity through it, so I turn this on, and it'll shine through, like that. Yeah, well, it's the highlight of my week because there's one teacher to 10 students and you get to really spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them. It's really nice. I think the kids enjoy it. They enjoy it. And also the students are skilling as well. As a progression from where they are now. Mm.